outcome and worry by parents, families, students, uh, policymakers is something popularly talked about called learning loss. And this is a, a really big focus for many people. I'd like to push back on that a little bit, and I think it's absolutely the wrong focus. We should not be thinking about what students are losing um, academically. Now, when you think about learning loss, what people are talking about is meeting the curriculum standards um, that are embedded in grade five and making sure that students are getting all and checking all of these boxes. And that what, that's what happens in a, in a normal time when we're not in a pandemic um, in schools. I would argue that the metrics that we use for determining where students are, are inappropriate. <laughs> um, they have long histories of racial bias. They are flawed from the beginning. And so when we think about learning loss, we're the ones that, de that determined all of those mile markers, which means we can shift what they are in the future. More importantly, we should be focused on health and well-being and survival. And that's what pandemic teaching and learning is all about. We can think about things that we've gained, things that we've learned. They may not align with academic standards, but I imagine that there are things that they've learned about life, life skills, um, perseverance, feelings, all kinds of things that we don't measure and we don't count in traditional schooling. We're still in a pandemic and it's not just about the fact that we need to do online learning. We are humans living in a pandemic. We have students whose parents still need to go to work and so they're learning in a space where they're holding little brothers and sisters on their laps. Um, we have people who don't know the health of their family members who haven't seen their family members that they love and care for in almost a year now. And we see teachers more and more prioritizing care and social emotional learning um, because we know that it's more important that a student signs on, says hi, talks to a teacher, talks about their feelings than it is that they complete their math assignment right now. And so we're still in emergency remote teaching and learning because we're still in a pandemic. I'm not overly concerned about learning loss right now in ISD 728 because of the amazing things that we have going on and the opportunities that we have for kids and families, not only during the pandemic, but after the pandemic. And so um, we will continue to be aware of that. But um, for me, it's more of a concern with an opportunity gap and that may or may not directly relate to the pandemic. We wanna make sure that all of our students, regardless of what they look like, regardless of their socioeconomic background or the crisis that they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, we want every single learner to have the same opportunity and have amazing opportunities to take them from where they're at to where they could go. And so being able to secure support and provide information for our community as well as our staff, making sure that we can continue to honor the trauma and the grief and all the stages that come along with crisis, uh, as well as continuing the business of a school district that we're expected to do. I think we're setting the bar too high for students and in teachers. And I feel like teachers often don't get talked about very often in this conversation. The focus is on student learning, all of this, which rightfully so. And yet our teachers in Minnesota right now are in crisis. They are so burned out. They are so overworked. They are emotionally spent. I'm worried. I continue to worry that teachers are gonna leave on a mass scale. I'm worried that it's been too much and we haven't been taking care of our teachers enough. And what would it look like to take care of teachers in this pandemic situation? Most of them are doing distance and online learning for the first time. So not only are they, they kind of basically are reimagining how they do teaching and learning in their classrooms. That's a huge, huge lift. It's incredibly unfortunate the way that people are talking about teachers now, but they are professionals. And frankly, if we gave them the time uh, to learn, explore the way that every other profession gets to, to actually have a moment to do that, um, they could continue to soar. It is 
amazing to me the amount of learning that has happened both formally and informally in the past year related to online learning related to using technology um, it's I can't even encapsulate how intense this has been for people um, they've just stepped up to the plate and done whatever they needed to do find information wherever they needed to um, and it just kind of shows that we haven't been treating teachers the way they should have been for a very long time.